Hello, good morning, we or good afternoon, depending on where you are located. Today, we are going to demystify glue. Um, one of the most often asked questions that I get when it comes to my artwork is what kind of glue do you use? Uh, that is usually comes from other artists or other craftsmen who um, are looking for the best glue. And it is such a dilemma. So you can see right behind me, I have stacks of glue. I have tried pretty much everything on the market out there. And um, it's just, it's, it's confusing. And there are different glues for different purposes. And so I want to help you demystify all of that. And uh, so we have a lot to go over, but if you don't catch everything, don't worry because I did create a cheat sheet for you. Um, my students would have hated this. I mean, they would have loved this, but I never did this for them when I was teaching. But anyway, the cheat sheet is available on beadmosaic.com under the resources. Um, you can download it. It's a PDF. It's free. No big deal. Um, I want to share this information with you. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So um, one of the things that is kind of confusing, and I know this happens with people in a lot of other countries because they don't have the brands of glue that we have here in the U.S. Um, I'm going to go over U.S. brands, but we're going to talk about glue in general. So the first kind of glue um, that is most common is called PVA glue. And PVA glue is a, it's a polyvinyl acetate. So it is a man-made material. It was developed in 1912 by a German named Fritz Klatt. Um, and it doesn't give off any fumes. It dries clear. It's not toxic. So it is by far the most popular glue that you can buy. And under that PVA umbrella, you're going to find products like um, Mod Podge, and Weld Bond and Aileen's Tacky Glue. Um, Elmer's School Glue is also a PVA. Um, another one is Wood Glue. This is, happens to be Gorilla Brand, but any kind of wood glue. So these are all PVA, they're all polyvinyl um, acetate glues. That's the main chemical component. They do have other things added to them depending on the formula. Um, and what your purpose is for it. So um, that's kind of the, the umbrella name for the all-purpose type of glue. Um, also, another thing about these glues is that they're typically water-soluble, so it makes it really easy for cleanup. And, um, and it, like I said before, it's not toxic, and you don't want to be breathing fumes. A lot of glues have toxic fumes and it's so bad for you, um, especially when we spend hours and hours during a day working with these products. So uh, be really careful for that. Um, these types of products work really well with bead mosaics. Um, they tend to be our go-to and I want to talk about some of the differences in the brands, but there are differences in the strength of the glue. For instance, an Elmer's school glue is a very weakened version. Um, it's also made, so these glues are non-toxic, but you're not supposed to eat them. Okay. Um, so they're saying non-toxic in the form of fumes and touch, but don't eat them. <laughs> now the school glues are a little bit different because we all know that kids eat school glue. I know I did when I was little, probably why I'm the way I am. Um, but, and also the drying times vary and the clarity also varies. So um, some of the, the more popular products that are used in bead mosaics um, include Aileen's Tacky, which is my personal go-to. Um, and then Weld Bond would be my second choice, but there's not because it's an inferior product by any means, because Weld Bond is a fantastic product. Um, it just costs a little bit more than Aileen's. And the tests that I have done, it doesn't dry as clearly as Aileen's. Um, and what I did was, I don't think I have my piece of glass around here, but I put it on a piece of glass to see which one would dry clearer, even though I typically don't work on glass. But because I'm working with glass beads, I want to make sure that it's as clear as possible. And I find that Aileen's dries a little bit clearer than the Weld Bond. That's just my own tests, though. Um, and I live 
in a very, very dry environment now. So that might have something to do with it. The level of humidity definitely affects the glues, mostly in the drying times and the time it takes to cure the glue after it's dry. Um, I know that there are people out there that use Mod Podge um, for gluing mosaics. I personally don't. Um, and it's, it can be used as a sealer or a glue or a finish, um, but it, it works. You know, it's, it's a good solution if you, if you need that. Um, some other glues, there's, I mean, there are just so many brands of glues out there for bead mosaics. Now, these products can be used full strength. Um, I use this in multiple variations in that I use... Um, this is the original tacky glue, but I also discovered recently, and this is very exciting. Excuse me, Leila, honey. The dog is here, sorry. <laughs> um, so we know that Aileen's and all of these glues come in different types. So here we have Aileen's Turbo Tacky, which is a faster drying tacky glue. I personally don't want it to dry super fast because I like to have time to work with my glue, with my art. Um, there's a clear gel tacky glue. Um, this dries super clear, but it dries the same as this, except this is white when you, when it comes out of the bottle. So um, that's the difference there. But what I recently discovered and I'm super excited is, and I've never seen it before except online is that Aileen's makes a super thick, okay, I'm trying to make sure this is in focus for you. But anyway, it's a super thick tacky glue. And this is a really great alternative for silicone. So you know that I use silicone to create a lot of my animals because of the bugle beads. Um, I created, whew, let's see, this little guy recently to um to test it so i was working with these bugle beads right here these longer ones that are a little bit heavier and these guys are stuck and it's perfectly clear you cannot see anything so it's a great alternative to silicone because i've been using silicone for years on this type of work and it's very toxic smelling it's it's i try to use it outside um it it's goopy and this stuff is goopy as well, but that's what you want because some of these beads that we're working with are much heavier than other beads. And so you need something that's just gonna be stronger. It's not gonna allow any movement or play in the beads. So this is a super great product. It's called Super Thick Aileen's Tacky Glue. And if you wanna know where to get it, go to beadmosaic.com because we carry it now. So I'm super excited about that. And another glue that I recently discovered is um, another version of Aileen's. This, this is so, it, it seems so trivial, but it is a ready to use version. So it actually sits like this. And um, I am just dying to, um, to use this because my regular glue that I'm using every day, I sit it upside down in a little place in my studio so that it's ready for me because the stuff takes a little while to get there. So I discovered this ready to use stuff and I am so excited um, because then I can keep it wherever I want and it's ready to go. There's just the pop off and then it's going to go on here. So uh, these are also available on the beadmosaic.com website. So I'm really, really excited about this and this, yay, new toys for me. Um, so anyway, but they are both, well, this one is the original tacky glue formula. This is the super thick and they do sell this in an eight ounce. This is a four ounce one. Doesn't take a lot of glue unless you're doing a huge, huge project of this one. Um, so I just got the four ounce one to, because I wanted to test it for you. I wanted to make sure that I knew uh, what I was doing and um, kind of what was out there. So um, another type of glue that I use all the time is my glue mixture. And those of you who have been following me for a while know that um, I mix my own glue because I need it to be... Um, more liquidy and I need to be able to work with the glues for a lot longer. So I get, 
that question asked a lot about what is my glue mixture and what is that? So now, wonderful news. Um, we are actually selling my glue mixture pre-mixed. So you don't have to guess anymore if the formula is right. Um, so they will be coming in pouches and this is an eight ounce size pouch. We're gonna have 32 and 16 ounces as well. Um, and those are also on the beadmosaic.com website. But um, they're great because all you have to do is pour it into your favorite squeeze bottle and it's ready to go. There's no mixing, no worrying about water temperature when you do the mixing and all of that. Um, so these are available. Super, super exciting news. Uh, that's a brand new, a brand new development for us. But um, yeah, so if you want to use the glue mixture to do this type of work where you're gluing down groups of beads at one time, that's a great solution because it allows you to work with the beads as long as possible. And then you can uh, glue them all at the same time and when they're in place, once, once you have more you want to. This design is actually one of the new kits that we're coming out with in a couple of months or a month or so. So keep your eye out for that. Um, and these PVA glues, one of the nice things about these is that you can use them next to each other. So if you want to use the super thick on the bugle beads and then the regular on the other beads, you can do that. They are compatible. They will not react to each other. But when you start putting them next to dissimilar types of glue, they do tend to react together. And an example of why you would need to use multiple types is, so I'm working on this cat. She's not done yet. I don't know what her name is yet. Um, but there are sections with long bugle beads that are layered. There are sections where they're very flat. And then there are sections where they're done in random. So this is one piece of art that has multiple types of techniques going with it, where I could potentially use three to four different types of glue. So um, that's, you know, so when you get into some of the more complicated pieces, you tend to want the right tool for the job and that um, will do it. So um, that's kind of it on the PVA side. Now, to go to the other spectrum, there are a lot of other glues out there that are not PVA uh, that are stronger, that work differently, and tend to be more toxic. So those are the bad parts about them. The good things about them is, um, let me show you. So these are some different types of silicone. Now I um, have used silicone in the past. I figure, you know what, if it'll hold a house together, it's gonna hold my beads on. So I um, tried all kinds of product. Now most silicone is used for household purposes. So it's sold in really large guns and uh, the quantities are just outrageous. But um, GE had come out with this product, Iron Grip, and they still sell the product, but they don't sell it in this fabulous little dispenser anymore. And one of the reasons they discontinued this dispenser is because the tops kept breaking off. Um, and I have, I don't know, five or six of these things where the tops popped off and they exploded on me or whatever. And so, and I talked to GE and they were like, oh, it's discontinued. I'm like, well, that's why, because you created an inferior product, but the glue itself is really fabulous. So when this started happening to these, I went to, and I'm going to break this open, uh, DAP sells this it's an ultra silicone and i got this at walmart i think um so it's it's clearer than silicone it is an adhesive so one of the things with silicone is there are silicone sealers and there are silicone adhesives and you want to make sure you get the adhesive because it actually has additional product in it that's going to hold things together um, and this dries perfectly clear it does have a toxic fume but it's not as horrible as this stuff. Um, and so I recommend very well ventilated places. If you have a ceiling fan or something, get that going. Um, but there are also some other things. So this is a white silicone and this is a black. Um, and this is actually a gasket sealer silicone. And, and I, I would untape it for you, but, um, <laughs> I don't know that I could get it back. Let's see what, what the top of it says. 
Um, it's a GE product, but it's a premium silicone gasket and seal. This is black, which is fabulous. If you're doing something black, like I did um, some Ravens and I was using the bugle beads and this black was wonderful because all the gaps that are between the bugle beads, and that's not something that you can avoid. It just is part of it. Um, they are filled in with black. So this gasket sealer is great. It's, it's hard to find though. Um, but if you find it in black, it works really well. Toxic fumes, but for small uses, it's okay. This is kind of the white version of that. So again, if you're using white bugle beads and a white background, these are great because they will help the consistency of the color in your pieces. Um, but they, um, you know, the, they're great because they come in smaller dispensers, which is really nice. And they also come in all kinds of brands. But again, make sure you're using the adhesive version and not just the sealer version. You want to be really careful with that. Um, another type of glue that people ask me about is epoxies or resins. Um, so this is a type of epoxy. This is, this is a mix. Um, epoxy is a mix product. It is something where you have two parts that need to come together. They're going to react to each other once they're mixed, and then they're going to become glue. And they're usually incredibly durable and hard. Um, so they hold really well. The downfall with epoxies is that they tend to change color. Now, this is a clear epoxy that I bought, um, but it this package has never been opened and it will turn yellow over time. Most epoxies will. Now, resin works the same way. It's a, it's a type of epoxy. It looks clear for a long time. Unless you buy the really expensive brands, there's only a couple of brands that will not yellow over time. Most of them, especially exposed to sunlight, will pretty much all of them will change to yellow over time, but it depends on the degrees of yellow. Um, and so it's, um, it's concerning for me because I want my work to last forever. And that's one reason I use glass. And um, I don't want it to turn yellow unless it's intended to do that. Some people want that aging effect. And I actually have done that on purpose on certain projects, but um, yeah, so I don't recommend using resin and epoxies for that reason. Um, another type is Gorilla Glue. Now this is the clear stuff, which is great because it doesn't expand like the other Gorilla Glue. However, you can see that it's already turning yellow. It's it's clear. This isn't something I use very often. I don't use this on my work. I use this for my household type stuff, but it is turning yellow already, even though it's the clear product. Now you're not usually using a lot of this stuff, so you might not notice it, but I don't recommend it. Um, it's also very strong stuff. And a lot of the beads will react to the glue. So with the PVA glues, like these types of things, you don't usually worry about the glue, the beads reacting to the glue, but our beads, a lot of them have coatings on them. They have paints in them. They have metals in them and you don't want to give it something to react to. There are a lot of chemicals in the silicones and in these types of glues that will react to the coloring in the beads and, um, and not allow them to, um, to maintain their color. So be really careful with that. Now, um, kind of an ex, well, and then let me talk about a couple other things too, before we get into, um, that. So, um, E6000, this is my, my tube of E6000. <laughs> this is really popular for mosaics. Um, it's also very popular in jewelry making, and it is a really good product. Like it, I mean, it sticks in, and it's good stuff. However, the fumes will knock you for a loop and you want to be careful. <laughs> you don't get knocked out with the fumes on this stuff. Um, this is great for certain things. Like if you want to put gems down in specific places, you're using a lot of rhinestones or crystals that are flat backs 
and you want to make sure that they're stuck. This is great for that because again, like I said, they will stick. It's a really great product. However, be careful about putting this product next to this one. Um, they have off gassing, especially this one more than this, but this still has some off gassing, even though you don't smell it. But when you put the two next to each other, and that goes with any of these types of alternative glues, the silicones next to the PVAs, there are reactions. And these reactions will cause the glue to change colors and to yellow. So um, it's, and it's, it, it'll ruin your project. I did a seagull once he was white, of course, seagulls are white. And I did the body in white, long bugle beads. So they were about this long. And I started using this product for that. And then when I got to his head, I needed smaller beads and the silicone was just too thick. So I switched over to this and I did a whole section. I was just about to do his little face. And I came back the next morning and it was neon yellow. And I called, I changed his name to Super Sam um, because he looked like he had kryptonite around his neck. And that is the reaction that those two glues had to being next to each other. So that was a huge lesson for me. I had to rip up that whole section and start over again through the beads away because that was the, the silicone is not water soluble. So I couldn't wash it off. Um, with a PVA glue, you can wash it off your beads. So if you mess up and I do that a lot and everybody does, you can scrape them up, soak them in, in water for a couple of days, and that glue will eventually work its way off. A silicone won't do that. So I did have to throw those away and start over again. But the, the point is, try not to put them together. Now, if you do have to, and I've had to do that since, I learned there is a curing time. All glues have time to dry, and then they have time to cure. So dry usually means it's dry to touch. And uh, so most of them like this is within three hours, you can have dry to touch. You can, you can go ahead and touch it. Hold on. Um, this is dry to touch 12 to 18 hours maybe. Um, same with any of these, but there's a cure time. And the cure time is the time that it takes for it to fully dry, really letting off those off gases and making sure that that component is seriously, that those, all those chemicals are done working and they're going to hold this piece together. That time is extended to probably, I go 72 hours on something like this, maybe more. Um, something like this, 48 hours till it's totally cured, at least 48 hours. And that's if you live in the desert, like I do, if you live, when I used to live in North Carolina and summer humidities, I would leave it a week because it was the humidity plays that much of a part in it. But you want to make sure that it has time to really cure that it's completely dry and there's absolutely nothing that is going to change that. Um, and so be, be really careful with that. I, if I need to mix them and I still do that, I plan and I do the silicone or whichever first, I let it sit a week before I pick that project up to continue the other part of it so that the rest of it has time to dry and they're not going to react to each other. That's a pretty important thing. Um, some other types of glues that are out there um, little more specialty glues are, um, well, this is super cool. This is black glue. <laughs> this is an EVA glue. And I bought this at Blick, which is an art supply store that most cities have. I think I went to Phoenix to buy this because we don't have a Blick where we live. Um, but this is a, an EVA glue similar to Weldbond and Elaine's, but it comes in black. So great alternative to this stuff. 
doesn't have the fumes. I'm not sure on the staying power, but I'm going to assume it's like regular uh, EVA glue, uh, but it is black and it wasn't even that costly. Um, it wasn't that much more than the white glue, but I was super excited to find it black. Um, I had to share that with you guys. And then there's also this glue, it's called Fume Fusion. Now I use a lot of EVA foam and what I call acetate because it is made of acetate um, in my projects. And this glue is made especially for that to glue the two types of foam together because they are porous. And uh, this is made for that. I got this at a hobby shop, I don't know, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, but they're the hobby shops all over the place that deal with uh, cosplay and EVA foam will have this foam fusion. So uh, this gives me some versatility on that. But those are just a couple of other types of glue that I discovered. Now, for those of you who want to work on things that are very precise, so you're, you're working and you want to, there's an example. You want to lay these little itty bitty guys in the right direction one by one. And there's just a lot of detail going on. Um, and these dispensers are just too big for you. There are a couple of alternatives. One is Aileen's sells these little pens. And this is a, this says, I think it started as turbo tacky, but I refilled my pens. So who knows what's in here now? Regular Aileen's most likely. Um, but these little pens are great super fine tip. They're easy to use. You can, you can pop them in there. Um, and they sell, I don't know, two pack. I, we have a two pack on the beadmosaic.com website that you can buy. Um, and they're great. I use these a lot, but I also like to use this, which is, um, made by silk paint. Um, and this is made by sugar, sugar loaf, sugar, sugar, something. Anyway, on the beadmosaic.com website is the link for this glue dispenser. Now this thing is fabulous because this is an air pump. And what you do is you put your EVA glue in the syringe and this has a little plastic tip syringe on it. You put it in the dispenser, push the button and then it goes and it has a little air thing right here where you put your finger on it and you can control the amount of glue that comes out. This was originally designed for cake decorators so they could write happy birthday mom on your birthday cake in beautiful lettering. Um, but it's been adapted for our use. And if you use the link on the beadmosaic.com website, there's a 10% off discount for you uh, for using the, the coupon Sabrina did what I could to help you guys out because it's not cheap, but it is great if you do a lot of precision work. Now I don't, I used to keep this full of glue on her all the time. And if you keep the tip wet, like with a wet paper towel, then it doesn't, the glue doesn't dry out. However, I moved to the desert and I'm finding that I, unless I'm doing a big project that I'm going to use this a lot, it does tend to dry out because there's just no humidity in the air. And so now I only fill it when I need it, but it's easy to clean. And, um, it's a really great product for those of you that are doing very precision work. If you can't do this one because it runs over $150 because it has a pump with it, that it's not very big. It's only about that big. Um, and all the parts and everything with it. If you can't afford that yet, then this is a really great alternative. And these I think are like, seven or eight dollars on the website for two of them and then like i said i refill them all the time so uh those are some solutions for you precision people now um there are a lot of you that like to do bead mosaics on 3d um, objects now i personally am not a 3d person but i have done them in the past and they're a lot of fun and the gluing is different because something <laughs> Something like this is going to run. Um, it, it's just a more liquid based glue. So silicone is a great alternative for that or our new happy place, the super thick Aileen's Tacky will work for 3D stuff as well. So excited about this stuff. I love finding new things that work. Or a lot of people love to use this product. 
Now this is epoxy sculpt. Okay. It works the same way that epoxy works. This product is made by Aves and I'm trying to work a partnership with them to get you guys a discount, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, you can get it from Aves. It comes in different colors, but it is a two part product. And it's something that you need to mix together in order to get it to work. Great thing about it is that it, once you mix it, it's like silly putty. And I'm trying to look for the, um, I didn't think to get it out earlier, but I have a little thing that I make. It's a, it's a sculpt clay when you mix it together. So think of silly putty. It's about that consistency for those of us who are old enough to remember what silly putty is. Um, and you can put it in any shape you want and you can cover it, cover objects with it. And then you can stick the beads in there. Um, there's an artist, Betsy Youngquest. She's a fantastic bead sculpture artist. And she uses this product a lot uh, for her work. Um, so this is really great if you're using larger beads, you need to embed them. If you're using round beads that are circular on the back and they're not flat, so they're harder to stick in, you can use these products. So what you're going to do is you're going to take half of this, half of this, you're going to mix them together. You're going to play with them for a while. Um, I recommend putting on gloves because they are toxic. You don't want to get this stuff in your skin, but do the gloves, do the mixing, and then you can put it on your product. And depending on how thick it is and how big the beads are, you just stick those beads right in there and they will stay. So it's great for things that you want to stick up and uh, kind of be suspended on their own. This is a really great product. It's not a, it's not ex inexpensive. It's, it's kind of expensive, but a little goes a long way. And if you're doing 3d stuff, it's, it's worth the investment. They also sell it in larger sizes. This is one half. Well, this is two pounds, but there's two containers that go with this um, that are in part A and part B. And if you buy white or any of the colors, they are paintable, um, but you can get the base color that you want, white or black, gray. I think they come in all kinds of colors too. So that's on Aves uh, website. And I, I'll put the link at the end of the video so that you guys know what that is. But um, that kind of covers epoxy sculpt. Um, and then in usually you won't see this, but it also can look kind of like grout. So um, we don't usually grout our work in bead mosaics. That's something that um, we leave for regular mosaic people. Um, I personally hate grouting something. <laughs> I make more of a mess than I do what it's worth. But um, for those of you who want the look of grout, this can achieve that by sticking the beads in and then letting the epoxy sculpt show. So um, that is a great, um, great product. Hope you get a chance to try it. I really, really enjoy that. Um, now, another thing that I want to go over that goes with glues and adhesives is um, sealers. So sealers are very similar in that they work pretty much the same way. And you kind of need to seal your glue no matter what type of, of or, uh, product you're using. So when you're done with your project, I recommend, I always recommend that you seal it uh, because the humidity and the dry and the sun and whatever your environmental situation is, uh, you're going to want to seal the glue so that it doesn't reanimate or react to the environment. Um, and especially if you're using my glue mixture, which is um, most of you have the recipe already, but um, it is not a, it's not intended to be a hugely thick glue scenario. So it, it, you need to seal it in order to make sure that that's going to, that bond is there forever. Um, so to, to talk about sealers a little bit, there are basically two types. Um, you've got your spray sealer and I use personal preference. These come in different brands but I use the Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze. This is, the sun keeps making this thing. But anyway, this is Home Depot product. Um, I'll, I'm gonna try to get it on our website so you can order it from us. But anyway, um, they 
Krylon makes a version that's very, very similar. It's almost identical. The only difference I have noticed with the Krylon one is I think that the fumes are a little bit um, stronger than this one and the fumes last longer. So it, it, you know, this, this smells bad, but not horrible. These need to be used outside. Uh, you're going to be spraying them. They're like a spray paint can and they need that time to off gas. And, and I don't want you breathing this stuff. We don't need people with COPD in the future because they were snuffing this stuff. Um, and this comes in a lot of different finishes. So this is the triple thick one, which I use. It's a clear high gloss, but if you don't want that glossy look, um, you can get all kinds of things. So here's a Krylon. This is a satin version. Um, and one of the things you need to look at, and I'm going to show you this on this label, non-yellowing indoor, outdoor. So right here, it says non-yellowing indoor, outdoor. All of these say non-yellowing somewhere on them. So I think this one is on the back label. Um, seals, protects, revitalize, fast yellowy, fast drying, non-yellowing. So um, this is the Rust-Oleum 2X matte clear version. If you want matte, they also have um, semi-glossy. This is the satin version. So there's all these different finishes. These are acrylic based. The nice thing about the acrylic based is that they're less toxic. I hate to say they're, you know, we're looking at toxicity. We've got to take care of our health. Um, and they also don't react. The glues normally and the beads will not react to them, but just don't overdo it. Put a, what I recommend is for these types of products, put one layer on that's reasonable, let it dry for a few hours or the day, and then add a second layer the next day if you want to make it a little bit thicker and you feel more comfortable with that. Now, if you don't want to use the spray products because you're indoors or your project doesn't allow for it. And I just had this situation where the background didn't need to be covered and I couldn't mask it off properly. So I use the versions in the can and these are, um, you know, just get a paintbrush and do put them on with a paintbrush. The nice thing about these is because you're not throwing paint all over the place or different things, you, um, you know, you can control where it goes. You can, it's, it's thicker, so it will grab more and put more product on. And sometimes that's good when you're using a lot of specialty beads and they're all different heights and sizes. Uh, sometimes it's better to put a thicker thing on, but also weather permitting. So this year I live in South Lake Tahoe area and we have gotten over 700 inches of snow this year. And the weatherman said the other day that we have not reached above freezing temperatures at night in six months. Okay. That does not make for easy sealing of projects. And I am constantly working on projects. So I did have to use this product a few times over the winter with commissions to get them done on time because I couldn't work outside. And thank God it's normally not like that here, but anyway. Um, so this is great if you are kind of confined to indoors and you don't have an outdoor workshop or a garage or something to do the other thing in. And um, this is again, fast drying, non-yellowing. It says it right on the box. Um, there's Minwax also makes one, it's called Polycrylic. This is a matte version. And then this is a glossy version only because that's what I bought. And uh, Home Depot Lowe's, they sell these. They're, they're fairly easy to find. A quart goes a long way. So you don't need to buy the gallon. This, this will last you. And you don't want to get too much because if it gets old, it, it's not good either. And it might dry on you. Um, and so then more fun stuff. So because <laughs> I've been scoping out the Aileen's website, and they're ordering thing because now we can buy wholesale because we're selling it. Um, I discovered that they sell an acrylic sealer assorted pack. And this is for artists and crafts people. And they're smaller cans. These are four ounce cans instead of the, um, let me see, what are these? These are 12 ounces and these are six, I think. No, four ounce. There's four ounces each and these are six. But 
If you want to try different ones, so this has a glossy one in it, it has a matte one, and then it has a pearlescent, which I'm really excited to try. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but these are great if you want to just try and see how they work, or if you have a small project and you're not planning on becoming, you know, crazy like me, professional, that that's all I do. Um, but this is a great kind of um, mix pack that you can get and and try them. And um, this is non-yellowing indoor outdoor projects, fast drying, seals and protects your projects. So uh, this is great if you don't want to invest in the bigger ones and have a bunch of cans laying around. You can get this pack. This is also available on the beadmosaic.com website. Um, so I think that I have gone over everything. Um, and I don't know if you have any questions or I am going to, let me just get up here and um, let's see. Okay. So um, if you ever have any questions about things, please contact me. You can email me Sabrina at sabrinafryart.com or you can uh, get on the beadmosaic.com website and download the cheat sheet that I made for you. Um, and there are several cheat sheets of oh, the back. You don't get the dolphins with it, but <laughs> I'm always saving paper. Sorry. Um, the beadmosaic.com website has cheat sheets for a lot of other stuff on there. So there's different resources available. Um, it will link you also to the YouTube channel that has the tutorials and the videos and things like that on there. And, um, there's just, it's just a load of information. There's also the links to the um, glue pen company on there. And if you use um, the code Sabrina, you get 10% off. Always willing to get a discount on something, right? Um, but the Aileen's products are available on there as well as other bead mosaic specific products. So um, we have... Uh, just dedicated this beadmosaic.com to you guys and helping you make your bead mosaic projects, which I'm so excited about um, because we want to make it a one-stop shop easy. You can get your craft foam there. You can get your backer boards there. You can get different types of glue there. Um, and we're working on partnerships with other companies to make sure that you get the best prices and the best selection on the other things that you need. Uh, the only thing we don't have are the beads themselves, but we are going to have a partnership with a bead company that will uh, supply the beads. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, if you have not tried doing bead mosaics yet and you want to try, um, you can order the kits. They are also available on the website. And uh, the kits come with everything you need. They come with the pre-mixed glue container the beads, the strips, all of the different things that you need to create an eight by 10 piece. This is one of them, but there are a dozen different designs. Some of them come in multiple colors and colorways and they come with everything pre-measured. We are also going to be offering patterns. Those of you who have asked me about patterns, I'm so excited. Um, they're not posted yet. I'm working with my designer to make sure that we cover everything and that they're very professionally done. And um, they are, the patterns are going to be so that you can create your, these designs using your own beads, but there won't be any guesswork as to how many beads you need to buy and what you need to do because it's all going to be on the pattern. So uh, those are coming up and um I don't know. What else? Anything else? Anybody have any questions beyond what type of glue do you use? Like I said, that is my most asked question. And my standard answer is I use the Aileen's Tacky, but I use it in multiple forms. I'm using the pen. I'm using, now I'm using the super thick stuff, which I'm really excited about. I'm also using this ready thing. This is this is so great. Um, and then I also use my glue, which uh, we are now selling pre-mixed. So you don't have to guess about this. And you just need to pour it into your own glue bottle and it's ready to go. And so I use that 95% of the time I'm using that stuff. Um, and I think that's about it for this session. Thank you so much for joining me. 
I will put all of the links in this, the show notes. Sorry about the noise. We got the dogs. <laughs> the dogs are in here. They're telling me it's time to get out. Mom, you need to go play with me. Um, but I'll put them all in the show notes for you so that you uh, know where to go. But the main, the easiest thing to do, go to beadmosaic.com. That has links for everything in it. It has all the information in it that you need. And um, I, I just want to make this easy and enjoyable for you guys. So I hope this helped. And um, if, again, if you need to get a hold of me, you can message me on Instagram or Facebook. You can email me, sabrinafryart.com, or just go on the beadmosaic.com website and you can uh, download the information or contact me via that as well. So happy bead mosaicing. I hope you enjoy yourself. I'm going to continue working on this cat that um, has been a long time project. <laughs> It's got a funny story to it, but um, I've always got 50 different things going on and I appreciate you being here with me. Have a great, great day.